Hello everyone, I'm in Istanbul today at the Hagia Sophia, the great moshee and I'm Aram Pilsen, an international concert pianist and today I would like to talk about what great architecture and music have in common because I've just been inspired to talk about this today here with this great view. If you take a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach or by Beethoven, you have this great uh, form. For example, here we have this, you know, these towers. And in music, uh, in a sonata, you have an exposition, you have a development section, you have a recapitulation, and it's all interconnected. Especially also in fugues, for example. If you take a fugue by Bach, you have a theme, uh, Dux, the first theme, and then you have a comus. It's the second voice entering. It's always like a fifth higher or a fourth lower. And then you have the counterpoint, you know, which is actually reacting to the theme. And you have all this exposition, and then you have the development sections where you know the composer just plays with the themes. And that's basically, you know, what you can see here. You have this. You know, I'm really not an expert on this, but you have all these different elements combined with each other and it's just so fascinating all about it. What I want to say is that you, of course you have to follow your feelings when you play the music, but it's also very important that you understand the inner structure and also the connections you know, between the parts. Otherwise you'll not be able to really fully represent that piece. So you need to have that like view over the whole piece and then of course also pay attention to the details which is very very important if you want to interpret a piece in the best possible way. On top of that of course you also have to be an actor is everything that I've talked about already but you really need to understand the structure of the piece in and of itself. Many students often ask me you know if it's important to actually understand the harmonies to know where it's a major, where it's a minor, where it's a tonic, a dominant, etc. And yeah, it is very important, but it's even more important that you understand why it's there. For example, if you have a cadence, let's say a very simple cadence, you have a subdominant, a dominant and a tonic, right, as the harmonies, it's very important that you know why it's there and that, for example, the dominant is also um, has more weight and the tonic is kind of a release, for example, or that you understand where there is a dissonance, where there is tension in music, and where there is consonance, where there is no tension, because, you know, that actually plays out in the interpretation. If you know these tensions, if you know these uh, importance of the different harmonies, you know, if you start by classical music, for example, you have much of the much simpler harmonies and you go to romantic music and you have much more complex harmonies and then you know in contemporary music often you have no harmonies at all so it's all um, you know there's a big tradition of that and it's important to understand it for example if you look at old buildings you know there's also a tradition in how you build that and then if you look to more modern buildings of course you know you don't have that but there is a connection to the old style often or sometimes there is you know uh, the architect plays with different elements and it's the same in music basically if you really want to of course study music on a deeper level if you really want to become a professional musician you need to have also great classes in theory for example when i was in salzburg i remember i had classes with um, Günther fierlinger who showed me exactly also how i can play chorals on the piano how i can read general bass and also uh, play that on the piano but also how I could play different cadences and we would also analyze different pieces. Later in my studies in Hanover I had classes with Arvid Ong also a great teacher and then we also understood how to actually read a Brahms ballad for example, how to understand a Mahler symphony, to understand all these different harmonies in there and it's really important to really get a solid foundation of that. Another thing that's also very important is the rhythmical elements. This is something that I will talk in other videos, but here I just want to show you how the architecture, the basic harmony and uh, functions of different uh, motifs is important to understand in order to interpret classical music well. As an architecture also in music, it doesn't really matter where music is coming from. You know, this is oriental style, but we also have great churches in uh, the West, of course. It doesn't really matter where it's from, the greatest art always has 
these core elements, this core structure. And that's important. Like art brings order into chaos, right? You have the chaos, which is underlying the order, but you also need the order in order to express that and to bring, you know, bring that uh, into our world. Basically, uh, you know, art is the creation of people and uh, what we see in nature is the creation of God, if we believe in God or, uh, you know, universe, whatever. As art is the creation of human beings, human beings always try to bring order into the chaos of the world and to express that and to leave something behind that is bigger than themselves because otherwise you know life would be pretty meaningless that's also you know the role of art and of music to bring something into the world which stays which has a deeper meaning and for that we need to create that order and yeah that's also why art always has tradition why there is order in art why you know you cannot just write music without any uh, connection with that's why you cannot build something without any connection you need to have that foundation of understanding you know the tradition of your culture and to build on that and then later on of course to break with that too but we have something where we come from to break you know we cannot just break nothing there has to be something before so that's important as but for example after the Second World War, you know, as there was so much destruction in the world, it was difficult also for artists to express actually because there was so much horror, so much shock. And that's why also music, for example, changed and there was no tonality anymore. That's also one reason. Of course, Schoenberg was there before, but it also went further from there um, as we saw that destruction in the world. Like, what can you write after that happened? And uh, it's important that we also break from what has been before and now you know also contemporary composers or someone walking by now also contemporary composers for example they have form again two days ago i played a composition by Atach caesar i will also show something there on the youtube channel at some point but it was important to understand that also he for example he uses traditional elements from turkish folk music and also breaks with that because he writes something for the piano right and he also brings his own elements into it but it's always inspired by tradition and that's what actually the essence is of this video so if you can take something from it, it would be that we have tradition and culture we bring order into chaos and um, yeah that's what we're here for of course you can also build something when you build a business of course you can also build something when you create a family of course you can also create something when you do science and you discover things, but I think art is uh, something very unique because it really transcends human beings, transcends uh, our life span as well. For example, if we create something in music today, it will also stay very long. And uh, that's very, very important to notice. That's why I think everyone should do something creative. That's why I think everyone should do art. Doesn't matter if it's music, doesn't matter if it's painting, poetry, you know, architecture great architecture <laughs> I probably won't build this alone but I think you get what I want to say and ending on this note you know if you also want to learn how to play the piano yourself doesn't matter if you start from scratch or if you already have some knowledge about it then please apply for a free session with me for a free lesson we will discuss where you are right now where you want to go what steps we need to take so that you also understand the complexity of music that you also understand the complexity of playing the piano so that you can bring order into this world and also express everything that you have in your soul. So don't hesitate to fill out the form below. It's at aaronpilson.com academy. And I will enjoy my day in Istanbul, in Turkey, which is also a great chaotic city. It's full of people. Uh, it's full of impressions, smells, noises and uh, tastes very good food here by the way i love food in turkey but we also have these monuments of art which stand for order in a chaotic world and it's great that i'm here thankful for this and see you again in the next video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and take care